have to be an automotive enthusiast to really know what it is. The iconic body, structure, you damn right you know this is a badass muscle car. So for this episode of Autopilot, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the Hellcat. This is a Dodge SRT Challenger Hellcat. A name that a religious uh, grandmother will avoid saying, this by far has to be the most badass muscle car you could buy in today's time. With the supercharged wine, the last time we had a muscle car like this was back in 03 with the iconic Terminator Cobra. And now Mopar has took this crown and gave us this beast. Powered by a 6.2 liter supercharged V8 that puts out a whopping 707 horsepower at 6,000 RPMs and 650 pound-feet of torque at 4,800 RPMs. And all this is directly from factory and yes, it's under warranty. So anybody could own a 060 time car that's able to achieve this time record at 3.4 seconds and can reach a top speed up to 199 miles per hour. So this Challenger SRT Hellcat has a starting price of $58,995 and it's available in both a 6 speed manual or a 8 speed automatic transmission but one thing you gotta know the automatic it's additional 3 grand which this one right here has. The automatic shifts really quick and you have 3 different ways to select your gears. You can either just leave it on auto or manually select the gears by either using the uh, the hand gear selector or the metal shifter behind the steering wheel. So with all that power and also being a rear wheel drive muscle car, according to Motor Trend, they were able to get a 0 to 60 time of 3.7 seconds and a quarter mile time at 11.7 seconds at 125.4 miles per hour. And this was on street legal drag radials. That is insanely fast for a factory car with this price range. But to go along with that power, there are several different modes you can select from in this SRT menu located right next to the shifter. When you press this, it will bring you to this screen. On the display, you have four different modes to select from. You got track, sport, custom, and auto. And each mode you select, you can actually see what changed and from the previous mode and if you go and customize you have full control to adjust it however you like. You could adjust the horsepower limit to be from 700 to 500 horsepower, transmission, paddles, traction, and even suspension. You're freely able to adjust all this on this Uconnect display. And back down here you always have access to launch control that allows you to get the, the quickest number possible each and every time you launch from a standstill spot. Now before we start driving off, let's go ahead and take this opportunity and take a quick listen to that aggressive exhaust note of freedom. Okay, after listening to those clips, I think the microphone just couldn't handle it. The exhaust note that this beast was producing is insane in person. But listening to that whine though. Even inside the vehicle while you accelerate you hear that supercharged whine and it sounds like music in my ears. But back to the subject, I wanted to go ahead and test out and see if, if the Hellcat was indeed livable. Since the size comparison from a standard Challenger is no different when it comes to width and length. So for this first trip, I went ahead and took this thing grocery shopping with me to a nearby Costco. But even in the parking lot, I was stopped by people questioning me about the car who were just fascinated to seeing it. But after that quick 5 minutes conversation, I was able to easily load everything and fit even more stuff inside this trunk compartment that the Hellcat has. Now this trunk compartment is larger than what you could get in a regular muscle car as this is one of the largest at 16.2 cubic feet and also has foldable back seats if you ever need an extra cargo space. The battery is also located in the back for a better weight ratio. So compared to its competitors, the Mustang and the Camaro, this has the largest. 
The back seats isn't the most spacious, but once again, it's still one of the largest options as there's actually an additional three back seats in the back here that could fit two large size adults comfortably during long road trips compared to a Camaro, for example, or even a Mustang. But back on the road, when it comes to handling, this is a fully independent suspension. Both the front and the rear are independent and the wheels are connected with big beefy Brembo brakes. In the front, we have 15.4 inch disc brakes, six piston calibers, and in the rear, we have 13.8 inches discs with four piston calibers. This is the same setup you find on the wide body Hellcat as well as the 392 SRT Challenger. The vents on the top hood are not just for looks, they're actually fully functional as it not only allows the hot air to escape, but it also provides additional downforce. And moving on, if we took a look at the headlights, these headlights are called air catchers and the driver's side allows air to be fed into the air intake and on the passenger side, that headlights actually allows cool air to go in the engine compartment. Now, it wouldn't be a true modern Mopar car if there wasn't any Easter eggs, and there is. On the windshield right here, we see a little outline of the Challenger, and I think these are really funny and cool to add. Now, going back to look at the headlights again, the headlights are HID, and they have the iconic daylight running lights. And the vehicle is also integrated with automatic high beams, which how it works for those who are unfamiliar. Let's say you're driving on the back roads, and it's really dark, if there's no traffic coming by, the high beams will automatically turn on and when it detects an unpresent vehicle heading your way, it will quickly disable itself, preventing you from blinding the oncoming traffic. And you also got a lot of cool safety features like blind spot monitoring with rear crossing traffic alerts. It's standard with a backup camera now. And this one also has adapted cruise control. So with 707 horsepower, you may say that's dangerous or too risky to be driving in public on public streets and it requires a lot of experience. In reality, this thing has all the bells and whistles you need to drive this thing safely in the city. Visibility on this thing, unlike other muscle cars, it's not that bad because you actually have a really large size rear view mirrors. And they also heat up too. So if you start this vehicle up in the winter time, it'll quickly defrost it as well. So with 707 horsepower, I mean, this thing is drivable. Like I could live with this thing. It's able to carry groceries just fine. Everything was able to fit in just fine. I was able to fit some more if I wanted to. But let's go ahead and see what 700 horse, 707 horsepower can do when merging on the freeway. to the handling aspect of things we should all know this is not a track focused vehicle this vehicle was designed and engineered to be fast always in a straight line and that is exactly what this thing is but with those big old brembo brakes that we have the pirelli p0 tires for common street purposes this vehicle has more than enough control to make quick maneuver turns but again this doesn't handle like no porsche but to the most part, it's still a really fun car to take on the twisty back roads. Especially with that supercharged wine. It's like music to your ears. But back inside the cabinet, the infotainment system that we have is an 8.4 inch touchscreen Uconnect display system. Paired with a Harman Kardon 18 speaker surround sound system. Which by the way, if you ever need to raise up the music to block out the engine noise, you can. It's more than enough to isolate you from the engine note if you want to. You of course also get navigation, satellite radio, Bluetooth connectivity, and dual climate controls and a ton of different applications. And yes, there's actually support for Android Auto as well as Apple CarPlay. Then behind the wheel up the driver's side, you get also get a display over here that gives you a bunch of vital information about the vehicle, which you could easily view and navigate with with the controllers on the steering wheel. 
and after sitting down in this vehicle for a few hours now after daily in it I gotta say the seats are actually really comfortable the seats themselves are also heated as well as cool ventilated and back to the wheel the wheel is fully wrapped in leather and also has a nice flat bottom which overall feels really comfortable and good to grip and when it comes to safety features internally there is advanced multi-stage airbags as well as seated mounted side impact airbags and like any modern vehicle there's also modern curves inside airbags as well so the vehicle is up to specs when it comes to safety impact collisions so with all that being said the hellcat is one damn hell of uh, see what i did there of uh, muscle car and if you ever get the chance or opportunity to drive one i would highly recommend doing so and that is everything on how it's like driving a 2017 i'm sorry 2018 hellcat now you can actually drive this car if you guys want as it is available on toro that's right if you're flying in the northern california part bay area even the sacramento airport you could actually rent out this vehicle and you could drive it test it out and see how you like it yourself so if you do like the chance to get behind the wheel of one of these things definitely do check out the toro page i'll include a link to find out more about this vehicle in the video description down below so check it out if you're interested anyway guys this is going to be the end of this video if you guys enjoyed this kind of content and want to see more definitely do hit like and get subscribed and feel free to comment down below if you want to check out another vehicle i might be able to get my hands on it and do a first drive review to continue this autopilot review series but thank you guys for watching once again take care and i'll see you in the next one peace